We're here today with the all new Honda HRV, the company's new small SUV rival to the Nissan Qashqai and the forthcoming Mazda CX-3. Now this is a vital car for the brand and it has some very big sales projections. Honda enthusiasts might remember the original HRV of the late 1990s. And that car never really took off here, but when you look at the growth in the segment since then, you have to say it was a bit ahead of its time. This car, however, is a bit late to the party. And the question we want to ask, is it good enough to make up for lost time? Well, let's find out. Jumping inside the HRV for the first time, I gotta say, this is probably the most premium and upmarket feeling Honda cabin that I've sat in for a long time. I've been a bit critical of Honda cabins of late, but it seems that the company's really turned it around. You've got some lovely touches, like the driver-oriented interface with the integrated touchscreen. You've got some sort of upmarket vents here and some really nice soft leather surfaces abound. Um, it's practical too. I mean, you've got these nifty pop-out cup holders. You've got a big center console, which doesn't seem to want to work. There we go. Some storage space running down the transmission tunnel and even a Volvo S bit hidden by here. That plus some big door pockets and you've got a practical and well presented cabin that really steps it up for the brand. Honda says that this car has about as much room in the back as the average mid-size sedan. And it's a little bit hard to argue with that. I mean, I've got a heap of legroom here and I'm sitting behind a person who in theory is about six foot tall in the front. Lots of room for my feet under the seat. These seat backs are scalloped, which gives you even more leg room. Shoulder room's okay. Um, the only thing that probably is affected is the headroom because of a curved roof line. Uh, also, the side windows are a bit small and the seat pillar's a bit big. So visibility out can be a slight problem. There's no rear air vents, which we don't like here at Car Advice, but they make it up to you with excellent, uh, lovely leather touches on the armrests, a bottle holder in the side, and of course, a cup holder in the middle. So altogether, it's a pretty nice place to spend time as a backseat passenger. So I've spent a bit of time behind the wheel of the HRV now, both in the inner urban confines and out here in the beautiful Tasmanian countryside. This car certainly feels more at home in the city uh, with its soft suspension and its light steering. Uh, it certainly feels more at home in low speed areas. Out here on twisting country roads, um, I've noticed that the, the springs are probably a little bit too soft and it's perhaps a bit under damped. When you find a sequence of corners with some bumpy roads, it does pitch and wallow about a little bit more than I would like. Um, the light steering doesn't really load up either and there's not a whole lot of feel and feedback. So on a twisty road, despite Honda's claims that this car is sort of sporty, it's actually not. Um, but in its defense, you know, around town at low speeds, it's comfortable, it's quiet. Um, the engine uh, doesn't have a whole lot of torque but the CBT does a surprisingly good job of actually getting the best out of it, and it doesn't interfere, its NVH levels aren't too high, so that's definitely a positive. And, and finally, the high driving position does give you excellent visibility. Um, you sit up nice and high, and you can see everything around. So um, in, the, in the inner city, this car feels quite at home, but if you're wanting to get away for a weekend and go and find a nice bit of road, you're probably not gonna wanna go too fast. Now, a Honda just wouldn't be a Honda unless it had class-leading cargo space. And this thing, just like the CRV and the Jazz, has Honda's magic seats that have up to 18 different configurations. My favourite is this one. Have a look how low the load floor can be. You can get 1,032 litres of storage in there, and that's enough for two mountain bikes to be stood upright as long as you take the front wheels off. And I suppose on that practicality front, that's as good a place as any to end. Uh, this is a really practical and really well made and quite classy little crossover SUV. It seems to be a bit of a return to form for Honda. Now, there will be a review on the site, so if you're interested in the car, you should definitely check that out. Uh, and we're also going to do a comparison test with this car and a couple of rivals in the not too distant future. But for now, on first look, good effort Honda.